Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 10 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about design time and runtime formatting of Grid View Control. Grid View Control provides several inbuilt styles to format different sections of the control. First, let's understand what are the different sections that are present in a Grid View Control. So first, let's display some sample data in this Grid View Control. Let's configure SQL Data Source Control. So let me select the connection string that's present in web.config file. Uh, we have a table called TBL employee, I want employee ID, first name, annual salary and country columns. Let's now associate the SQL data source control with the grid view control. So we have some sample data there. Now if you look at this grid view control, it has got a header which displays, you know, the column headers there and then the rows themselves. So these rows, they are collectively called as rows. And then uh, the rows that are present at odd number positions are called as alternating rows. This is because if we want to apply styles differently, you know, to rows that are present in even number positions and to the rows that are present at odd number positions, then we can make use of row style and alternating row style properties. We'll talk more about them in just a bit. Okay, a grid view can also have a footer. By default, the footer of the grid view control is not displayed because this grid view control has a property called show footer, which is set to false by default. But we can turn that to true if you want to, you know, show the footer of the grid view control. Now let's see how to use these different styles to set, you know, or to format different sections of this grid view control. Obviously, if I set a style at the entire control level, you know, obviously if I use control style, control level style, you know, that's going to be applied for the entire grid view control. So if I go to the properties window at at the grid view level at the control level there's a back color property so if i select something like you know blue for the back color so that's going to be applied for the entire grid view control and now let's say for example i want to change the four color of the entire grid view control then there is a four color property okay so let me say i want a four color of white maybe so that's applied at the entire control level. Now let's say the header, I don't like it to be blue back color. Instead, I want a green color. Is it possible to customize header? Absolutely, there is something called header style. So I can change that here. So expand header style and then let's say I want to change the back color to something green. So that's my back color. And you know, the rows here, you know, at the moment, all the rows are in blue background, but I want them to be maybe red background. So how do I set row style? Obviously, there is a row style property, and then I can change the back color, maybe to something red. Okay, now look at this. When I set row style, it's applied to all the rows in the grid view control. Now let's say I want to format the rows that are present in odd number positions differently. Is it possible? Absolutely. We can make use of something called alternating row style property. And if I expand that, you know, we have back color property there. So let's say, for example, I want that to be that color. I can select that. So that's alternating row style. And if I want to, you know, style or format this footer differently, again, you have footer style as well. Okay. Now we have seen how to set these styles using the properties vendor. So obviously when we change these properties behind the scenes, it's writing the HTML for us. So look at this, there is an alternating uh, row style element for which we have a back color attribute. Now if you want to, you know, change the format, you can do that directly in the HTML source as well by changing those properties, I mean attributes here. All right, so we have seen how to format the grid view control at design time. It's very easy to do. You know, there are loads of properties to customize this according to your application needs. Now, is it possible to change these properties at runtime? Absolutely, we can do that as well. In fact, if you look in the page load, look at this. We are setting the row style property of the grid view control. You know, within the row style, I'm setting the back color property to red. Okay, so it's also possible to change these properties dynamically. In fact, let's look at a simple real-time example of where we would actually do this. 
So by default, the footer of the grid view control is not visible to show the footer set show footer property of the grid view control. So we have seen control style, row style, alternating style, header style, footer style. But there is also something called edit row style. What is this? Whenever we put a row of the grid view control in edit mode, then what styles do you want to apply to that row? You know, that's edit row style. Now this is not a complete style properties that are available for a grid view control. There are several other styles as well. If you want to see all of them, just go into the source and then within the grid view control if you just open an angular bracket you can see all the properties for example there is pager style if you have paging enabled you know then you can configure pager differently using pager style okay so there are several other styles styles as well for example empty data row style edit row style okay we'll talk about all these styles you know as we talk about those concepts for example when we talk about paging we will see how to use pager style you know dynamically at runtime as well all right all right now let's look at a simple real time example of where we can uh, use uh, these formatting dynamically but before that look at this if you're not very good at designing so if you look at this grid view this is a horrible design okay so if you're not good at designing if you want to use some of the inbuilt uh, color schemes that are already provided by grid view control click on the smart tag button there's something called auto format once I click on that look at this there are several formats that are available for me for example I can choose brown sugar there look at this it's nicely formatted you know I can choose other formats as well so let's choose brown sugar for example and once I select that look at the you know the grid view is properly formatted and then you can change this from here if you want to okay we don't want the footer so oh, let's turn off the footer so show footer is equal to false all right Okay, so basically, let's see a simple example of where we apply these styles dynamically in code at runtime. Let's say I have this employees table which has employee ID, first name, annual salary, country, and culture. You know, that's the table that I have. Now, if the annual salary of the employee is greater than 70,000, you know, then I want that employee's row to have a red background color and a white four color. Is that possible? Absolutely. Now, look at this. Can we do this formatting at design time? No, we cannot because at design time, we don't know what data we are going to display. Okay, so dynamically at runtime, we need to loop through each row and then check the value for salary column. And then if it's greater than 70,000, that's when we need to set the background color of that row to red and four color to white. Okay, so we cannot do this at design time. We will have to do it only at runtime. And obviously to achieve this very easily, we can make use of this row data bound event. Let's see how to quickly do that. So we already have this data that is displayed in the grid view control. So when we run this now, all of the rows will be rendered normally with, with no special formatting. Even the row that has got 70,000 salary will be displayed, you know, um, normally and look at this why do I have a red background color here that's because in code we were actually setting that to red dynamically for all the rows at the control level so now if we run this whatever formatting that we have at design time should be displayed so at design time this is how the control looks like and that's how it looks like at runtime but remember if the salary is greater than 70,000 then we want to set uh, you know format that row differently let's see how to do that obviously we can make use of row data bound event right click on the grid view control go to the properties and then click on that lightning bolt symbol you should see something called row data bound event so let's double click that and then you know this event is raised every time a row from the data source is bound to a row in the grid view control so we have an opportunity to loop through each row here so we will check what is the kind of row that is being data bound if e dot row dot row type um, is equal to data control row type dot data row so if it is data row then what we want to do we want to find you know the value for annual salary column so how do I retrieve annual salary there are two ways to do that so int salary is equal to so I want to retrieve the um, salary from this grid view control the value for salary column and to do that I can use a class called data binder class 
and this class has got this eval method. Look at this, what is this method does? I mean, this method basically evaluates the data binding expressions at runtime, okay? So I can basically use uh, e dot data, e dot row dot data item. So which data item in the row, I want a data item which has got annual salary column name. So in my web form, look at this, the column that's displaying annual salary, the data field name, I mean basically the column name is annual salary. So from this column, retrieve the annual salary. Okay, and obviously eval method, what is it returning back? It's returning an object data type back because the columns can contain any type of data. So it has that, you know, super type, um, which is object. So we need to typecast that to be of type integer. So I can make use of this convert class, convert.toin32. All right, so we have our annual salary back. Now all we need to do is check what is that salary. If salary is greater than 70,000, then what we want to do, we want to set the back color of the row. So how do I get access to that row? You can use that grid view row event arguments object which is coming inside. So e dot row dot back color is equal to system dot drawing dot color dot red. And similarly, I want to set, you know, the full color of the row. So I simply say e dot row dot full color and I want to set that to white. So it's as simple as that. So obviously when we run this now, as you might expect, any row that has got salary of more than 70,000, that's going to be formatted in red. Okay, look at the all the other rows, they are rendered normally. Only this row has that special formatting applied. Now, as I told you, we can either use, you know, data binder.eval, which is a good way of retrieving a column value, or another way to retrieve salary is basically by doing something like this. So let's copy that and put it there. So in that row, so in this row, where is annual salary column present? It's present in, you know, the index of that column is two because the index starts from zero. So employee ID is zero, first name is one, annual salary is two. So I can basically say, instead of using data binder dot uh, eval, I can say e dot row dot cells of two because that's the, you know, third cell, I can retrieve the text from that cell and convert that. Now, if I run this, as you might expect, the behavior is absolutely the same thing, except that we are using, you know, a cell index to retrieve uh, the salary value. Now, using salary, you know, cell index is actually dangerous because tomorrow, if somebody changes the order of these columns, let's say I, somebody is removing that annual salary from there, and then he is basically putting it here, you know, as the a fourth column in the grid view control. Now look at this annual salary is the last column and they have changed the order. Now if I go ahead and run cells of two is actually something else. So what is present in cells of two? Uh, we actually have country and country is a text. Now can I convert you know, string data type into integer? No. So we will get a format exception at runtime. Just because somebody changed the column order, you know, we have an issue. But whereas if I'm using this data binder dot eval syntax, I will not have that problem. Okay. No matter where this annual salary column is present in the grid view control, as long as that column exists, it's going to go to that column, find the value and then return that. But this one specifically looking at cells, cell that is present at index location two. Okay, so at this time we have country which cannot be converted into integer. So we have this format exception. Input string was not in a correct format. That's why it's always better to use data binder dot eval to retrieve column values rather than using cell index. All right. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.